it's uh, uh, oh. <laughs> control board so you can uh, manage everything. Action tiles on what? Yeah, action tiles on an Android tablet. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you see, I have all, all my windows and doors. Yep. And here I have uh, um, temperature sensors. Oh so my I can goodness. monitor the temperatures. And here's all my lights in the living, in, in the apartment. And all my security cameras. And here's me and uh, Pia, my girlfriend. And I'm home and Pia is not present. Wow. So this is, yeah, so you can see that one, one of my windows is open right now. The design on that interface is so good, Peter. Yeah, it is. I mean, this is such an easy uh, uh, thing to work with, action tiles. So this is a must-have for all. When I sat down with Frank for his smart home tour, and if you, if you haven't already watched that, I mean, the guy's a genius, and he taught me a number of things. And one of the things that you guys were asking for was, action tiles. You wanted to know how to implement that and you wanted to know how it could really help you. Now action tiles is something that interfaces with Samsung SmartThings but once you've done that you have a number of opportunities to port that or get that on a number of Amazon's devices. So today I'm going to show you not just how to set up action tiles but actually how to get it working on a device like the Echo Show or a Fire tablet as well as show you some examples of people who've already done this. So let's go right into the setup here for how you set up action tiles, but stay tuned after that setup to get some of these examples of how people are using it and what I see in those panels. You'll also see my panels, which I think are built in a little bit of a different way than how most people will build them, but I think it organizes your smart home in a really smart way. So keep on watching. Just to start out, everything that I show you in the demo today will be on an Echo Show, but you could have an iPad, any Android tablet, or really a Fire HD tablet as well, and all of those work just as well, if not better than the Echo Show. There is one issue with the Echo Show that I'll talk about a little bit later. I don't think it's a big deal but you may. Heading on to actiontiles.com you'll find it's about a $30 one-time fee that allows you to connect to one smart things location or one smart things hub but you get unlimited pretty much everything else. Now after you go and create an account you're going to have access to a whole set of things in action tiles and right off the bat you can hit the plus in the bottom right and go ahead and add a panel. Now it'll tell you we don't have any tile sets yet but it's already moved you to that portion of setting up so you can go ahead click the plus again and create a tile set now I'm going to start because it's a lot like a HMI that you would see in industrial facilities I'm going to start with information first you can click the plus next to the word information you saw me add a clock but now if I want to connect any of my smart things any of my things I need to add the location through smart things so I'm just going to tap on continue and it actually brings us to smart things. You have to sign in and then choose your hub or your location that you're going to use. And then you basically have to check off all the devices you want to be accessible from action tiles and anything else you connect it to. Once you've done that, you can come back to app.actiontiles.com and go into your account and you can instantly go ahead and add all these different devices and you can see that per device you can add the different components now I'm just gonna pick a few random ones here but in general I'll tell you you don't need the batteries to be put in because you can show that in a number of, in another way which I'll show you later you can put in the temperatures and the sensor status and things like that this is all native functionality here once you've done that, you do have some additional settings that you can modify. Number one, on the tile set that we created, if you click on the three dots, you can hide the tile set if you'd like. You could also copy it if you wanted to start from there and just modify things. On each thing, you actually get a number of different settings as well, so you can change how it looks, the tile icons. There's a number of different icons that are inherent to action tiles that 
you can switch. So if something's not making sense to you from an icon perspective, you can change that. In the settings for the device, you can remove the name or the tile header. You can also change the height and width, and this allows you to really customize and battery level icon and the percentage, if you'd like, per device that you can have show up there. Now, of course, you could delete the tiles as well, and you can even delete the entire tile set. Now, the second tile set I'm going to add is a controls tile set, and I like to kind of break things out like this. So when I click the plus, I'm going to choose the mode and routines and things that I can actually control. And you get access to your Samsung SmartThings routines and the different scenes that you've set up there. Now, I can also add in the mode and the Samsung Smart Things or the Smart Home Monitor. Now, within this is a security capability, and this is really powerful stuff. You can change whether or not you want people to be able to interact with the device, or do you want them to just be able to view it, or do you want to put in a PIN code? And this is really powerful for making sure that only the right people in your home can utilize this panel and therefore only certain people can disarm and arm your smart thing security so you can go ahead back into that tile security and choose the pin pad and you can do this for the mode control as well if that's how you manage things through smart things now of course you can make those changes on any of these controls but now I'm going to add a third tile set which is the cameras component and we're going to add media. Now today I'm going to show you how to add in both your Nest cameras and you can see that's the third option as well as Wise cameras and a number of other cameras through another application. Now Nest cameras basically they require you to share them publicly and so you can go into your Nest account on the actual Nest website and you go into the settings, you scroll down for the settings in this camera and you go to camera sharing. Now there's two options, share publicly or share with a password and I'll show you that a little bit later. Now once you share that camera, you have this alphanumeric code that you're going, going to put into action tiles but you can go ahead and test that with a web browser see the feed come up and then you know it's working so go back into action tiles put that alphanumeric code basically the the very end of that url and just paste it in here hit save and you do have to check the box for adding media to your tile set here now in terms of the wise cams, you would think you could just put in the RTSP URL. Unfortunately, that doesn't work right off the bat, but let's have a look at our action tiles as it stands. So you can see information controls, cameras, and the Nest Cam, because I just shared it publicly, is live and available there as long as my Nest Cam is online. I can also use those controls, and I'm just actually bringing this up on a web browser right now. So you could always leave a web browser on a PC or a Mac logged in, go to Action Tiles, and control your smart home from there. Now, of course, I'm going to show you those other interfaces as we go. Back into Action Tiles, you can change the look and feel. If you didn't like how that looked, there's a number of themes that are available in the My Theme section, and you can change your panel's theme. Now, I told you that you could add a password, and once you do that, this is what it looks like. You do have to type in your password, and you can put it in on things like an Echo Show. Once you do that, I had to refresh the page, and then it came up for a while. I mean, it doesn't leave you logged in indefinitely on that, but here you go. You can actually see it on your action tiles. I like that little bit of added security personally, so I put that in there. Now, you also do have the ability to share panels with other members of action tiles. They can go ahead and view those if need be. You have some additional app settings. I'm not going to go through all of that stuff, but there's also the shortcuts, and that's not something I added. But because you essentially use a web browser to open up action tiles, you can put shortcuts to URLs to different things that you've put online. Now moving on to how we get Nest Cam and a number of other IP cams or different cameras working, you're going to need the application Tiny Cam Pro and you're going to need an Android device that is going to sit in your home for the most part. 
And you can go ahead and you can try things out with tiny cam monitor free. And I'll show you most of the setup in that process. Once you go into the application, you could scan your network to find out if there are any cameras it can instantly see. Otherwise you go into manage cameras, you add the camera and you add the IP camera. Now you can change the camera name and then you actually can look through the massive list of different brands that show up here and you can see there's just a ton but today I'm looking for wise cam and they're down at the bottom here or towards the bottom under wise labs now you can also change the camera model and what they tell you right away is you're going to use the username and password of your wise cam login so your base login for that service you're also going to have to disable two-factor authentication and you could use RTSP once you do that and you add multiple of these cameras here Here's what it looks like. Now, keep in mind, as I was doing this demo, the Y service was struggling. This is part of their upgrades with all of RTSP and the new sensors. But as I go into settings for the tiny cam application here, there's some video settings, there's some recording settings, but you can see I'm limited by pro or not having pro and the web server is what you need to get this tied into action cam. So once you buy pro, here's what it looks like. You come in the web server port number Number you can set in case you're managing your router you could also set port forwarding for this an admin panel username and password and this is how you log in on the web interface and then you can also set up a guest capability as well here so if you just want to have people able to view the cameras you can do that the other thing is within the recording settings it will actually create recordings on your Android device here so you can go ahead and configure that. The other thing is you can turn them on in the background and then you have to turn on the web server from the menu of Tiny Cam Pro, but that background capability allows it to continue to run and trigger recordings in the background for you on your tablet. So this is another way to create recordings. Now, as you just go and look at the live cameras, again, you can start to see your different cameras that you've added to Tiny Cam Pro and you you can monitor them just through the web interface but then you use that URL and inside of action tiles here and choose the MPEG stream or the MJPEG stream and make sure you add that to your panel. Once you've done that, you've basically configured everything. You would have to leave your Android tablet in that web server mode turned on. And I will say to some networks, this will be a little bit harsh if you're using RTSP plus you're using this web server, this could start to get a little heavy on you. So keep that in mind. I shrunk it down to just one of my cameras here and this is how it looks in the end. Now this is Frank's panel and this is what he set up and what we looked at in his smart home tour. You can see that he's got some great weather information that he's added to this. Even a seven day forecast is sitting there. He also has a ring doorbell that he can see the activity on. And of course he's got all the controls of his lights and he even has a full calendar to know which day it is. Now you can see six different cameras cameras that he has working on this all through the methods that you saw here today. So just briefly looking at Peter's panel, what I want you to have a look at here is how he's put spaces in between and he has specifically designed this for the size of his display. So he's set some things here that have really made this a user-friendly display and you can see how he's broken out the different components really well in his home now the other thing that you'll notice is his cameras he's able to basically turn them on and off and go to them as well here from this panel so really powerful stuff from Peter and I'll let you see his roll through of this again from the start of the video yeah action tiles on an Android tablet oh wow yeah. so you see I have all, all my windows and doors Yep. And here I have uh, um, temperature sensors, oh so I can goodness. monitor the temperatures. And here's all my lights in the living, in, in the apartment, and all my security cameras. And here's me and uh, Pia, my girlfriend. 
and I'm home and Pia is not present. Wow. So this is, yeah, so you can see that one, one of my windows is open right now. The design on that interface is so good, Peter. Yeah, it is. I mean, this is such an easy uh, uh, thing to work with, action tiles. So this is a must-have for all. As we go through the demo today, I'm going to be showing you on the Echo Show. But what I'll tell you is this device will time out no matter what browser, no matter what setting you change, this device times out after five minutes. And that's really the big differential between this and tablets for using this as a constantly running display for you and your family. Now, going into actually the Silk browser, all I do is Open ask for Silk. Silk and I can set up a tap function here, here on my echo show inside the screen you can see I have a smart home monitor right away and I have a pin pad or a pin code set up that I have to put in in order to arm and disarm the system so I can only get to that screen with that pin code now I also have my controls for routines and I've again put a pin code on that and that ensures that nobody can run those routines which could trigger certain things in my home that are security based. Same with the mode away home and night. I can't set that without a pin pad. Now I also have the cameras and I had turned off the wise cams for this just for the speed of the actual device here. And you can see how I do have to put in the password and once I put in that password everything shows up. Now you can have to refresh in some cases, but it will show up on your tablet screen. Once you have it show up on the screen, you just tap the little X up at the top, and then again you refresh the page here and it brings up the camera. So once you have your different cameras all showing as you'd like, this will basically hold from then on out, or at least for the session while you're sitting here. Now how I organize my screens a little bit differently is by area. And so this is my security screen and it allows me to go through the different components of my security system in a really clear fashion. I have the presence, I have doors, I have motion detection, leaks in water, and then I have my cameras again. From there what you'll notice is I have a path right back to the home panel so this allows me to move between screens really seamlessly and I would say that this allows you to break up things. Now the other control panels I have are for different parts of my room. So I have bathroom lighting, the living room, my studio here, and the bedrooms. And as I go into my bathroom here, I have all the different lights and I can turn on, turn off those. And then I have a number of sensors showing what's going on in the areas and the humidity, the temperature, and the UV light that we're seeing. Now I can go back again to the home page and go to another portion of my home, the living room where I have a number of other things. And I have a Sonos player here on the screen as well and you actually get quite an interesting little control interface. Now this is coming through smart things. It allows me to start playing. I can adjust the volume on the actual Sonos device that I just started and that's actually a group of devices but I could play and then adjust the volume on the Sonos and it instantly updates as you see right there as to the volume. But I can also hit the three little dots on the screen and bring up another interface to start controlling these Sonos speakers. Now obviously you can't access your different playlists and artists. It's just a start stop and a move forward in the playlist that's currently playing. But pretty powerful stuff actually. Now inside my studio I just have a number of lights that I'm controlling. You can actually see that I turned on my one accent light here that I normally have on for shooting. My right accent light has actually been repurposed uh, for the time being here for a robin's egg, believe it or not. But the bedrooms is the last panel that I've created and it's just a few lights right now, although I'll be adding some more things here right away. So I think you can see how you can move through the different components of your smart home utilizing action tiles here and by utilizing that little trick of moving between panels, you just have to add that as part of your screen. 
So there you go, guys. That's the full setup. That's the full tour of Action Tiles and how you can apply this to your life, to your smart home. Now, of course, if you haven't already watched any of our smart home tours. I mean, Frank's was unbelievable and we have a number of people now who have come on the channel and joined us for a smart home tour. Go ahead, watch that playlist that is on screen right now. There is incredibly powerful stuff that you will see. So thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you next time.